Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the Android interview questions. These questions are most often asked during the interview process, and let's see a few of them in today's video. So the first thing is, what is Android? Android is an open source operating system by Google. It was not created by Google, rather it was acquired by Google, but all the development is going on by the Google. Every year we have new releases for it, and this is one of the widely used mobile operating system worldwide. It's running on over 2 billion devices. So you can think of the power of making Android application. You could reach to the 2 billion users just with your Android application. And now let's talk about the manifest. That why do manifest is required? Being an Android developer, every time when you create a new project, you might be seeing that this manifest.xml file automatically gets created. And this is really important because manifest file acts like a signature for your application where it tells about the permissions that it's going to take, even the app components that it is using, or any sort of metadata, even for deep linking. All sort of things are required through the manifest. And this is used by Android OS, then even the Play Store, because right from the Play Store, you can see that this app requires what sort of permissions. So all sort of things can be read through the manifest file. Now let's talk about the build process. Because Kotlin or Java file we are going to use here for making Android application. So how do this get compiled down to the APK? Because this is not just the Kotlin or the Java file. We also have the resources like the images, our XML files, videos, and then our Java or the Kotlin code. So for that, we have a very good process defined here, where first initially we convert our XML files and get the r.java file. Also, using the Kotlin or the Java compiler, we compile down our code to the object code. This object code is nothing but the dot class file. Uh, after this, this is fed to the dex compiler, either dex or the d8. Now, this dex compiler, the overall objective is to further optimize this and give the optimized byte code, which will be the dex file. So, traditionally with Java, we get dot class file. With dex compiler, we got dot dex file. Then, eventually, this dex is fed to the APK builder. So this was about all the layout.xml and the Java or the Kotlin file. How about the resources? The resources like manifest or the images or the videos, all sort of things. So for that, we have Android Assets Packaging Tool, which compiles down all these things and feed it to the APK Builder. Now the APK Builder is having your resources and also the text file. Eventually, it clubs all of them together and gives you the APK. Okay, now let's talk about the DVM and ART. So you have the APK file. Now, how do Android Mobile, the Android OS, understand this? That it has to run this, it can run these things. Because for Java, it requires JVM. That's Java Virtual Machine. Based on that, it understands that this is the Java application. How about Android? Because we have converted our Java file through class and then class to DEX. So it's no longer dependent on Java anymore. So here, they provides the runtime environment. DVM is the Dalvik Virtual Machine, and another one is the Android Runtime. So Dalvik Virtual Machine got replaced with ART from Android Lollipop onwards. This has a capability to understand the DEX file and then compiles down to the machine code so that your app could run on Android devices. However, DEX was just for the just-in-time compiler. And this used to take a long time for making your app to run, or even while running the application, it used to make your app to run slower, and it highly depends on the CPU capability also, because it's just-in-time. So based on your requirement, it sent those code to the CPU, and then CPU used to execute it, and then show it on the screen, whatever content you are having it. So this is, something which you got overcome by ART. ART is ahead of time compilation, which means that rather than reusing the same code and then sending to the CPU and then caching it, how about if this could be compiled earlier itself? 
So with ART, when you install the application at that time itself, it gets compiled down into the machine code and then just fitted for running this APK. And by this way, you could see a very good improved performance. However, there's drawbacks also. The drawback was because it's compiling down before the execution, so it's going to take more space. And the initial app launch was a bit, bit laggy, bit uh, time consuming. And that's why with Android Nougat onwards, just in time also got introduced back along with ahead of time. So it's now it's like a hybrid compiler. And by this way, the app startup time and the optimization by the ahead of time compilation, we get an advantage of both of them. Okay, now let's talk about the D8 and R8. D8 is a DEX compiler. So in the build system, I've talked about the DEX compiler because Android ecosystem doesn't understand about the Java, so no JVM involved there. So DEX is important for mobile application. DEX is based on register based as compared to the stack based for the Java. So here it gives the performance boost and this is really optimized for mobile application. So during this build process, when you have your dot class files, you feed into the DEX compiler, the DEX compiler gives the DEX file. With D8, which is a replacement for the existing, the old DEX compiler, this even gives the optimized DEX file, which generate multiple classes. And also it's having a capability where it could reduce the size as compared to the previous traditional DEX compiler. Now let's talk about R8. So this was about the D8 DEX compiler, but what is R8? Because both of them can generate the DEX file. R8 can also do this, D8 can also do this. So the major difference between D8 and R8 is like D8 just take your code and convert it to the DEX file based on the optimization done. And R8 is something which you could think as a replacement for the pro guard, the traditional pro guard, where before converting to the DEX file, it further optimizes it based on the pro guard rules which you have defined and then gives you the DEX file. So how do this is working? So say that you have your class file, you're feeding it to the D8 or the R8. So before converting it to the DEX file, it comes into the intermediate representation. And during that part, R8 comes into action, add the optimization layers, and then finally generates a DEX file. So R8 with ProGuard, D8 without ProGuard. Now let's talk about the first class language for making Android applications. So the first class language for making Android application is Kotlin. Kotlin is a first class language because it offers so many great capabilities in contrast to the Java and also it's open source. So if you want to contribute to the community, if you want to generate something on your own, you can certainly do it because it's completely open source. Uh, this is one of the most common question is like, do Kotlin compiles down to the Java code? Which means like, say that you are writing certain code in the Kotlin file, do is it getting converted to the .java file and then .class file? Then the answer is no. Kotlin code doesn't get converted to the Java code. Rather, your Kotlin code directly gets converted to the bytecode. And with the level of optimization that is done because of the Kotlin compiler, that also comes into action. So that's one of the advantage with Kotlin. So it's not a out of way around like Kotlin to Java, Java to bytecode. Rather, it's Kotlin to bytecode directly. Now let's talk about the app components. So what are the app components that we have it? So app components are activity, services, broadcast receiver, and content provider. These app components are nothing but the entry point for your application. This is the place where you can interact with the users. So now let's talk about the preferred architecture while making an Android application. So the preferred architecture here is the MVVM. It's all because of the complexity of the lifecycle associated with the activity or the fragment. So it's best suited to use the MVVM because of the lifecycle and the view model that we have, which can understand about the lifecycle using the live data. 
Okay, now let's talk about the best alternative for async task. So if you are using the Kotlin code, then the best I could say is the coroutines. And if you are using Java, then the best could be the executors. Because this async task is deprecated from API level 30 onwards. So it's really important to switch from async task to either executors or coroutine so that you'll not get any deprecation issues. Now this is a really common question during the interview is about the life cycle of adaptivity or fragment. This is really important because if you have the understanding of the life cycle for an activity and fragment, then it makes easy for you to code based on the life cycles. And the life cycle for an activity is on create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. Whereas for fragment, it is on attach, on create, on create view, on activity created, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy view, on destroy, and on detach. Now let's talk about the add and replace. So how it is different? When you do fragment transaction, you might know about this that you can either specify add or replace. The major difference between add and replace is if you want your previous fragment to be in the active state, that means in on resume state, even though when you are adding one more fragment over it, then you should use add. They are all maintained in stack and in the visible stack, you could say, where all of them are visible. Whereas with replace, it gets taken off the screen and add to the stack if you are adding to the stack and the new fragments comes over it. So it replaces like remove the fragment first and then add the new one. Add is rather than removing any fragment, just keep on stacking the fragments. Now let's talk about the fragment and activity. Fragment and activity is really important concept because this is one of the concepts which is widely used in many of the Android applications. Fragment is not an individual component. It rather depends on the activity. You start fragment from the activity and the life cycle of this fragment gets tied up with the activity life cycle also, which means that if activity gets destroyed, there's no point that this fragment can retain itself. That will also get destroyed. We have an exception for the retain fragment where say if you are rotating the screen, it can retain the fragment, but in general, if you are killing the activity, your fragment will also get killed. So when should we use fragments? A fragment is really useful if you want to have a multiple pane kind of design on a single screen or same piece of logic, which is used at multiple places. Then rather than writing the same piece of code again and again, you could use fragment. Even we have dialog fragments, which can survive the configuration changes. So that's it in this video and in the next part two of this, I'll talk even more about the other types of questions asked during interview. If you want to know about any of the answers based on your previous experience, then do write those questions in the comments so that I will cover all of them in the next video. So thank you and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do hit the subscribe button so that you will not miss the notification for the upcoming video. Thank you and stay tuned.